Hello, and welcome to the debrief from the business of fashion, where each week we go deep on our most popular BOF professional stories with the correspondents who created them. I'm Lauren Sherman. How nice do you want to look in the virtual world? Meta, the owner of Instagram, Facebook, and Messenger, is betting that its users will want to dress up their online personas in designer duds. Recently, the company announced that it's launching an online store to sell fashion for its virtual avatars, and industry heavyweights Balenciaga, Prada, and Tom Brown will be the first brands to join. But will users be as excited about wearing a designer look online as they are off? Today, I have two very special guests with me to unpack Meta's latest move. Along with BOF technology correspondent Mark Bain, I'm joined by Eva Chen, VP of Fashion and Shopping Partnerships at Meta, who announced the product live with Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg a few weeks ago. Thank you, Eva, and thank you, Mark, for being here. I'm so excited to have you both. So, Mark, maybe we can start with you. When did you first hear that Meta was up to something and what exactly was revealed? I guess you could say the first hint actually appeared last year in October when Mark Zuckerberg announced that Facebook was rebranding to Meta and he presented his vision for the metaverse. Meta tweeted at Balenciaga and was basically like, hey, what's the dress code in the metaverse? You know, don't hear anything for a while. Then on June 16th, which was a Thursday, Meta tweeted at Balenciaga, can't wait for Friday. On Friday, that's the day that Mark Zuckerberg and Eva went on Instagram and announced this new avatar store where you would be able to buy virtual fashion from Balenciaga, Prada, and Tom Brown to start for your Meta avatar. Meta introduced these avatars a while back and has been updating them, introducing 3D versions earlier this year, and now you can dress them in designer clothing. Eva, I have to say, I saw the avatars of you and Mark Zuckerberg before I saw your video. And I saw them on Imran's, our editor-in-chief and founder's Instagram. And I DM'd him. I said, is that Eva? And he said, yeah. And and then obviously I, I read the news and, and saw your video. How did it come about? Everyone listening, hopefully, remembers the announcement that Mark is talking about a few months ago around the metaverse and the exciting vision for the metaverse. And I'll be honest, as a fashion person, it took me a little while to grasp exactly what that meant. I did know, though, that having seen the avatars that exist currently on the platform, that the fashion options, while bountiful, I don't know if any of them truly resonated with me, with my friends in fashion, and just like the wider community. People want as many ways as possible to express themselves via their avatars in the metaverse. They want to wear what they want to wear. And there are so many ways of self-expression from designer to the hundreds of free outfits in the store. So one of the things we started thinking about was, and I've you know been a part of the launch of Instagram Checkout, for instance. I've worked at this company now for over seven years, trying to be a bridge between the fashion industry and the platforms at Meta. And I knew that there are certain brands that are super iconic that would just be something that the entire fashion industry would be excited about. All the fashion editors, all the fashion enthusiasts, whether you live in Thailand, whether you live in, you know, Tulsa, whether you live in New York, whether you live in Mexico, it's just something that the audience would be excited about. And so we were thrilled to launch the store with Balenciaga, with Prada, with Tom Brown, These are three brands, I think, that really move culture forward. You have everyone from LeBron James to Cardi B to comedians, uh, you know, Instagram first comedians like Benny Drama wearing Tom Brown. Balenciaga is a brand that is on the tip of every fashion and culture enthusiast's tongue. I think that Demna was the only designer in the Time 100 issue that came out recently. And he's certainly a force, a one name force to be reckoned with. And then Prada, I mean, like, Prada is Prada. You know, it's so exciting that we have, you know, Linea Rosa bucket hat, like kind of more streetwear line to the leather trench, similar to the one that Kim Kardashian wore a few months ago, all available in avatar stores for anyone to consume. You might not be able to have it in your closet. I have none of those things in my closet physically, but I know that my avatar can wear them, which is really exciting. How did you get the brands, especially those three very, as you said, iconic brands to say yes to this? And I assume it took a good amount of work on their side or at least a good amount of thinking. The logistical aspect was the most challenging aspect versus the actual intent and excitement around doing this. 
these brands are brands that my team and I have worked with for years, even predating my time at Instagram when I was a magazine editor, you know, having those strong relationships. And the leaders at these brands are all really forward thinking, innovative people. I don't think that anyone could argue that Tom Brown has always kind of pushed the envelope. You go to any one of his shows and I feel like he's already in the metaverse. You go to his show and he has like the teddy bears lined up in a classroom kind of esque setting. He creates like worlds. And when you think about Demna and his shows, whether he creates an experience that echoes the refugee experience that he went through from Georgia to you just create these kind of immersive experiences as well. And Prada, like you only have to go to their headquarters once and you slide down that slide and you're like, this is, they, they've all created worlds. And so when speaking to them and reaching out to them with this idea, it was actually not a matter of convincing them to do it. It was everything that came after that, the team that's building out these outfits. And it's the nuances where when you think about Prada, whose use of texture, whether it's feathers, whether it's like, you know, plastic, like on the skirt that Hunter Schaefer wore on the runway a few seasons ago, there's a lot of nuance and detail that goes into this clothing that's hard to translate. Even when you think about Tom Brown and his white shirt, the buttonholes are in a very specific place. But, you know, having to translate the capabilities on the tech side and on the platform side to saying like, well, you might have to lose that buttonhole, for instance, because you're not going to be able to see it. It'll look like it's not on purpose when it's on a teeny tiny avatar. So it was always the details that actually kept me up at night the most. But I think that what came out When you see my avatar in a pleated skirt suit look in Tom Brown, like, you know, it's Tom Brown. You see the four stripes, you see the cut of the clothes. When you see the Balenciaga hoodie and the kind of baggy oversized jeans, like, you know, it's a Balenciaga look. And with Prada, it's like, you see the red stripe and you're like, oh, that's Prada. It's like, I feel like the soul and the spirit of these brands is well represented. And I'm really excited about what's to come. This is really and truly just the beginning. This is, I wouldn't even say V1, it's V.2 to five, because there's just so much more we can do. So Mark, for you, you talked to a lot of these brands, you talked to a lot of the creators, you did a story recently that we discussed on a different podcast about all the different artists and image makers that go into making these digital products. Other than the tremendous amount of press that they got last week and recently, what is the benefit for these brands to be on a platform like Meta and to develop specific digital products for their avatars in particular? There are a few things that come to mind. I mean, this is probably mostly a marketing exercise or a branding exercise because it's probably not going to be a huge revenue stream just yet. These are pretty low priced items. Correct me if I'm wrong, Evo, but I think they go from about $2.99 to $8.99 on the, the store. There are a limited number of outfits available. You'd have to sell a lot of those to have any real impact on the bottom line. But there is a really big branding advantage in that you're setting yourself up as one of the first brands in this early phase of the metaverse, especially working with Meta, which is obviously a a giant in the space. It's a leading platform. Mark Zuckerberg has been very clear that he has this really grand vision that he plans to build out. And these brands are in on the bottom floor, essentially. It also positions them as kind of forward-thinking brands in culture more broadly. Balenciaga has done this in a variety of ways. They showed up in Fortnite, the game. They had their thing with The Simpsons. They do this sort of stuff all over the place. And I think it's that kind of thing where it's getting in front of people. And specifically when you're looking at virtual fashion and these avatars, you might not have access, as Eva was saying, to a, a Tom Brown suit. But if you are a younger kid who sees LeBron James wearing one and you want your avatar in one, you have access to that now. So I think there are a variety of things that are benefits for the brands involved. Actually, Eva, I was curious, one of the things I would like to know is who is the audience for these avatars and and what subset of that audience do you think is really interested in Balenciaga and Prada and Tom Brown? I I think fashion is now part of everyday culture, right? I think that in the past, When people think of fashion, they think of the Paris runway and it's like a very specific type of person. You shop at a very specific type of store. But I think one of the things that's happened over the last, I would say like eight to 10 years is that there's a reason why when you think of the Met Gala, it is the intersection of everyone. It's like you have athletes there, you have politicians there, you have poets there. It's really a mashup of culture. And I do think fashion is now 
something that everyone can experience. And so, as you said, like LeBron James loves his Tom Brown suits, like the custom cut he must have to fit his frame. You know, you have Russell Westbrook who loves fashion and loves, lives and breathes fashion. You have Lewis Hamilton, who's, you know, race car driver and he loves fashion. It's like, I think it's broader than people might think and expect. And the other thing with these three brands is that I think these are three brands that are internationally respected and loved for fashion, but also, as you said, for like being experimental, trying new things. And within the fashion community, I think that, you know, people sit up and take notice when Balenciaga, Prada and Tom Brown do things and the way they do things. And so I was thrilled that they're the first three to be launching this. And Eva, what do you envision that marketplace looking like in terms of what people can access? I'm sure it's not just about these super high-end designer brands. What is the variety? What would your ideal marketplace be for this sort of fashion? So there are hundreds of free options in the marketplace in the store as well. So it's not just like these high fashion items that cost $2.99 to $8.99. I really believe that there should be something for every mood. And so, you know, on the weekend, I'm very much entering, this is kind of like weird, but random, but I'm like super into gardening right now. I'm like trying to like grow vegetables. It's like a thing. I don't know if you saw that Dior launched like a whole gardening set. Jones designed this like gardening stool. I mean, this is totally going to like take us in a random like direction that's not related to, you know, I do feel like people will want different versions of their avatars to express who they are and what they're doing, right? You could see a future in which maybe not immediate future, but like there is an avatar of me. I'm wearing gardening gloves. I'm wearing like a cute bucket hat and I'm wearing my gardening outfit. So when I'm posting stories and it's my avatar, it's me holding a gardening glove saying, yay. And then on Monday, if I'm doing a big serious interview with Business of Fashion, I am in like a Prada look. And then on Wednesday, when I take the day off to like hang out with the kids, my avatar is more in like a jeans and a t-shirt kind of casual outfit. And so I do believe we need outfits and things in the marketplace store that reflect everyone's different moods. And so this is just the beginning. Mark, you mentioned that the brands are getting in at ground floor. I actually would say there are no floors yet. We're building it together. This is very much a work in progress. It's work. I love building things from the ground up. I feel really, I loved being a part of the launch of Instagram stories. I love being a part of the ongoing launch of Instagram reels, IGTV, checkout. It's like, I, I love building things from the ground up. And I think we're very much in that mode right now of thinking and seeing what's working, what gets people excited, what gets people talking. And so it's been really fun to be a part of this for the last year. So I know you have to run, but I guess the last question would be, how are you seeing users interacting with the avatars already? As a fashion person who understands goods in a physical way, I worked obviously in print magazines before this. I worked at a shopping magazine, as did you. As someone who loves to shop physical goods and research, like I obsessively research this kind of pen and like I want this exact kind of thing. I love physical goods. Like I will say that. And so as someone who is a physical goods enthusiast, honestly, it is when you hear the word avatar, when you hear the word metaverse, your brain immediately leaps into what seems like light years into the future. I think what a lot of people don't realize with avatars, for instance, is that it isn't a big, scary step that's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to create an avatar. And then you think of James Cameron immediately. There are approachable practicable, like everyday ways to use your avatar. Like I basically use it as a sticker on Instagram. And so there are like dozens of moods, expressions. I use it on my Facebook messenger. We use a workplace messenger where we chat coworkers and where there are like hundreds of different kind of expressions and moods. There's one that has your avatar in like a garbage can holding a white flag and it says, I give up. And I use that one a lot. <laughs> When I'm thinking about you know something that is stressful, such as booking doctor's appointments and being on hold for like four hours. So these are low lift, low hanging fruit ways to kind of like start exploring avatars, start exploring the metaverse. It does not have to be you're jumping straight into the Ready Player One or the Ender's Game kind of situation of the metaverse. Have fun with them, explore with them. It's not something that has to be so serious and scary. I encourage people to play with your avatars. It's really fun to build one and kind of build outfits that express yourself. Like I'd love to hear what brands are people's dreams to see their avatars dressed in. I have some ideas already. Like I would love some patchwork Bodhi shirts in there. There are so many sneaker and streetwear brands that I think would be amazing. I would love my avatar to wear like a rainbow CJ Christopher John Rogers sweater. 
I really am going to look forward to, it's almost like if you think of paper dolls or playing dress up, it's like, I'm really looking forward to being able to express myself through my avatar and then using that on Instagram stories and all the other surfaces we have. So um, I would think of that first little baby step as just playing with it, editing your avatar, have them in Tom Brown one day and a Balenciaga hoodie the next day and a Prada trench the next. The sky's really the limit. If I'm not mistaken, you can already use the avatars in VR, right? On on Meta's VR platform. And the, the designer clothing isn't there yet, but I understand that's in the works. Yeah, the designer clothing isn't there yet. It is in the works. I always joke that when you hear someone who works at Instagram or Meta say like, you can imagine a world in which it means it's probably something we're thinking about, but like, you can imagine a world in which it is in VR, it is in those worlds. I can imagine a world in which a designer might release something that's exclusive to avatars. And then when you design your avatar wearing it, you download it and you pay for it, you might be, have the option to actually own that good in real life. That's the dream, right? When you think about it, I would love for Raph to design a custom X, Y, and Z and then like have access to, maybe it's just like an art print or something of it, if it's not the actual like hat or something, but it is going to be a limitless form of expression. It is going to be a place where designers will have fun and be able to experiment in ways that they might not be able to. If you think about something as a designer, it's like, oh, we couldn't produce it. It was too expensive to produce in real life. Guess what? That's not going to be the case in the metaverse. Like if you have an over the top idea, like imagine Again, this is just like me riffing, but Iris Van Herpen. Think about the beautiful, like, was it the water dress that she did? I don't remember what collection, but it was the dress that looked like you had like the splash and puddle of water behind you. It's going to be a form of art for some designers. And for others, it's going to be a form of commerce where they design exclusives. You can imagine a world one day where the physical good would be available as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing how designers approach it, embrace it, experiment with it. But I do want to temper people's expectations because it is very early days for this. But I do feel like these three designers, Balenciaga, Prada, Tom Brown, I'm so excited about that first step and what it represents for opportunities for fashion in the metaverse. Eva, thank you so much for being here. It was so fun to catch up and we appreciate you taking the time and giving us a little sense of what you all are up to. Thanks for having me. This was so fun. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of The Business of Fashion. When I first started writing BOF, it was out of pure passion for this industry and with an eye to how the disruptive forces of digitization, globalization, and consumer shifts would change the way fashion works. 15 years later, we are well on our way to helping to define the fashion business of the future. As I travel the world, some of you ask me what's the best way to support BOF as we continue to act as your guide during these turbulent times. The best way to support BOF is to support our journalism by joining BOF Professional, the largest community of fashion professionals in the world. A BOF Professional membership gives you access to our agenda-setting insights and analysis, which you won't find anywhere else plus the opportunity to learn from our talented team of correspondents and editors, as well as our wider network of the fashion industry's leading creatives, thinkers, and futurists. Follow the link in the episode notes to learn more. So Mark, before we wrap up, I wanted to break this out a little further out of meta and talk a bit about this market generally for designer fashion in the metaverse. And so I guess the first part of the question is, A, how much appetite do you think there is on meta for this? And B, obviously the designers are interested, but is the consumer interested? What do you see happening more broadly in the metaverse around designer digital fashion? So this is a bit of a tough one because it's such a new area. There is a lot of virtual fashion out there there's a real market for it. This stuff sells, but it's skins in games. Uh, so it's things in like Fortnite. You can have a skin that changes your character's appearance or something. People buy wearables in like Roblox, that sort of thing. But again, these are games where people are spending time socializing, hanging out. I don't really know what the market is quite light for Meta. Eva was saying that you can use these avatars already on an Instagram sticker or something like that. Soon you'll be able to use them in VR, but that's 
quite different really than an interactive environment like in Fortnite or Roblox or, or another online game where people are already spending a lot of time, but you're really inhabiting this environment. It's not just posting a thing on Instagram. You could argue that that would make it almost easier for people to adopt it too. If Instagram's audience is huge, if, if people are really using these and there's an overlap with people who want to show off their fashion allegiances, like I could very easily see somebody wanting to put up a Balenciaga hoodie. So, but that said, again, it's like the market for designer stuff specifically is also really new because you haven't really had a lot of examples of big, well-known designer brands jumping into these spaces. You have in some cases, like I mentioned, Balenciaga and Fortnite. We've seen companies doing this in Roblox. Generally, they don't really share the sales results. And again, it tends to be more of like a branding and marketing thing, like reaching that audience, establishing your brand with this demographic and this space. Fortnite doesn't really talk about how much their partners sold when they launched skins in a game. So it's kind of tough to say. But my impression is it certainly could be a real market at some point. I don't think it's there yet, but you do hear stories of real stories. These are not made up. There are designers who actually have businesses making game skins and they do that for a living. Actually, one of the founders of Artifact, a company that Nike acquired, would make skins for this game called Counter-Strike. It wasn't really outfits. It was like customize the look of your weapon, but there's a real market for this stuff online. A lot of people play video games and spend a lot of time in these virtual worlds. And if you have an avatar in these worlds and you're not really spending a ton of time outside of the house because everything is online, we spend hours and hours online on our computers every day. Why not have a cool skin or a cool Balenciaga outfit, especially if it's not that expensive? I think that's the last question from me. The price for these things is not high at all. I know it's not a real item, but it is a designer item. What did Eva say, two ninety nine to eight ninety nine or something like that? That just seemed low to me. So I'm curious what you think from that perspective of how is the pricing on video games and things like that? Well, one thing real quick, just to touch on the number of gamers out there. Those figures, I think it's like one estimate is like three billion globally, which is certainly a lot of people. But I think that includes the person who plays Candy Crush for 20 minutes on the train to work in the morning or even just once a week or something. So in terms of like hardcore gamers or people who are spending like really large amounts of time, it's a much smaller audience, but it's still a large and growing audience and a very dedicated audience that will spend money. The one thing I hear over and over, you talk to any parent who's got kids that they're like basically nine to like 13 years old. They are on Roblox and asking all the time if they can buy some in-game purchase. So there are definitely people spending there. To your point, the $299 to $899 is really cheap. I can't remember the exact numbers of like what things get sold for in a game like Fortnite or Roblox because they don't sell them in dollars. They have their own in-game currencies and you have to convert, but it's it's pretty cheap. It's probably like six bucks, that sort of thing. So it's kind of in line with that. But one of the things that is going to get really interesting is where these things become NFTs. So one of the selling points of, of NFTs as a concept is that you have true ownership. You can also create true scarcity. Right now in a game, anyone can have the item, but you can't take it out of the game either. Anyone for like whatever limited period of time can probably get whatever skin in Fortnite, but they can't take it out of Fortnite. In theory, NFTs will allow you, you'll be able to do like number one through a hundred. Um, they will be verified as like you have one of those hundred. And in theory, again, you'd be able to take it into any other environment. There are a lot of technical challenges to this. This is a far off vision in the future. But what it does mean is that you can create real scarcity of digital goods. And so you would have the same sort of dynamics that you see in fashion today, where you probably would have high-end items. And maybe the thing that defines the price could be a mix of like digital craftsmanship and scarcity. The sneaker market shows that craftsmanship is only part of what's involved in setting prices. Hype and scarcity make a big part of that too. 
But you already see this playing out to some degree in the NFT market where there are companies that sell digital fashion as NFTs, companies like DressX and The Fabricant. And you can see a pretty wide range of prices already. You can buy like a $35 NFT hoodie or a $1,500 NFT dress. I don't see any reason why as things progress, it wouldn't kind of follow the same dynamic. High-end brands are going to find ways to... I think, increase the prestige and the cachet of their items and scarcity is a part of that. So I guess the answer is watch this space. Yeah, essentially. It's pretty early days, like Eva said. Well, Mark, thank you again for joining me. And I'm sure we'll be talking about this again sometime soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. I really had fun this one. You've been listening to The Debrief, produced and edited by Emma Clark, Kate Barton, and Eric Bria in the BOF studio. I'm Lauren Sherman, and I will be back next Wednesday with a new episode. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can join BOF Professional today with an exclusive 25% discount on an annual membership covering key industry topics from sustainability to technology to marketing with access to our case studies, live events, and iOS app. To get this special offer and benefit from 25% off of a membership, head to the link in the episode show notes or enter the coupon code DEBRIEF at checkout. Visit businessoffashion.com slash memberships. Thank you.